Next up, I would like to bring to our stage Anna. Hello. Hello, Anna. So Anna Hoffman, she works for Microsoft and she's a data and applied scientist here and also the host of the wonderful show Data Exposed. And if you don't know about Data Exposed, boy, you are missing out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. And I also just won the game. So I'm pretty excited about that too. Yes. Analytic Anna. So that was you. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. And Anna is going to kick off uh, an exciting panel about data for good. Um, definitely looking forward to all the goodness that comes from everyone participating in the panel. Anna, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Addy, for having me. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we're super excited about this panel for good, talking about data for good and what good data is. Uh, so without further ado, I want to bring on our panelists. I'll have them introduce themselves because I know they can do it better than I probably can. And we'll start with Addy. Nice to meet you. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, okay, perfect. So hi, Anna, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I uh, have a deep engineering background, um, working um, in the industry for many years. Started usually with startup when they're very small, had uh, like the real fun experience of scaling both the team, the system, and, um, and the engineering platform. I'm a huge fan of data in all its form and like uh, excited to talk about good data. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. I know we're going to appreciate your perspective because you bring in a lot of different experiences to the table. So thanks for joining us. Our second panelist mm -hmm. is Eve. So Eve, I'll bring you on. And can you go ahead and give us a short introduction? Yeah, sure. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm very happy that I can be here together with these awesome women today. Um, I'm Eve Party, a Microsoft AI MVP working at Avanet as Senior Analyst Consultant based in Copenhagen, Denmark. In my free time, I hold sessions at conferences or community meetups and often write about my projects in my blog. Um, I find it fundamental to help uh, people understand data and AI solutions to build trust towards and help them control these developing technologies, which is why me and another AI MVP just started a new movement, movement to provide valuable series of lectures that will help you to jumpstart your career in the field of data science and AI. And if you want, you can follow me on Twitter and you can learn more about this movement. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Eve. And definitely, we're looking forward to hearing your perspective because you come from not just a data background, but also an AI black background. Uh, last but certainly not least with us, we have Ruth. Uh, Ruth actually started a startup, started a, founded a startup. Uh, but Ruth, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? She's muted. Ruth, I'm Ruth, having a little trouble Anna, hearing you. Thanks, uh, Anna, for the introduction. Um, I'm a... Seems like Ruth might be having a little bit of issues. We still can't hear you. Sorry, Ruth. Um, while Ruth is figuring that out, I can give a brief explanation of Ruth and then hopefully Ruth can figure out how to get uh, connected. But Ruth is a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. She's also a tech startup founder. Uh, she specializes in Java, cloud, advanced analytics and data platforms. So she's also going to be able to kind of bring that unique perspective. And hopefully we're able to get her back on uh, with us. But, you know, the show must go on. So we're going to go right into our panel questions. And like I said, we're talking about data for good, good for data. Um, so I think the the good first question, I'm kind of do, going to do a combo question. Is So this two part question is, how would you define good data? And then how do you think good data can help in doing good? So two part question, what is good data? And then how does it relate to data for good? So Addy, we'll go ahead and start with you. Okay, um, so like for me as an engineer, good data is, should be like uh, high quality data, uh, reliable data, 
uh, and provide meaningful uh, value for the business, but also like should be protected and safe. Uh, we saw too many cases lately that uh, like really valuable information was just hacked and like used uh, not for its original purpose. Um, and and like um, as for a, as for human being, not just an engineer, I would also like to add that like for me, good data would be a data that was collected like in a fair and legal way, not like such that was like um, misled by uh, how it is being collected. Um, and how this data can be do good, um, I think. The most exciting thing that I was seeing lately uh, in the last few years, not like just recently, um, is how um, a good data can be used for uh, the fintech uh, industry, uh, fintech and insurtech uh, like in specific, to see that you can actually get more valuable products by getting your personal data, historical data, and like data from other resources that are in combined can provide like really like cheaper products than it used to be, uh, um, cheaper programs or more specific programs that are can be um, like more appropriate for exactly what I need and not, not just like as one general uh, uh, program that I can choose from. Awesome. Thanks. So, you know, I really liked a lot of the things that you said in there. Uh, one, we talked about, you know, what is good data? Uh, you mentioned a thing that I think is really important, that it was the way it was collected was fair and yeah. legal. And, you know, we're making sure we're, we're equal across. So I think that's a really great call out. And then using data mm -hmm. for good, this wasn't kind of a use case I would have, you know, typically thought of. But I think I like the way you're saying, you know, if we can, in a fair and legal way, you know, bring in uh, data from different places and use it to understand, you know, potentially customers or different people uh, better, then we're able to create things that are more applicable to them. Uh, maybe even we can find ways to make it more efficient. So there's a lot of ways that good data can help us in doing good. So, so I really like yeah. uh, your answer, Addy. Uh, now, Eve, I'll yeah. kind of toss the Thank same you. question to you. Like, what do you think good data is? Would, do you want to add on anything to what Addy said? Yes, I would like to add, but I totally agree what she said, because, of course, depending on the situation or the purpose of the data usage, we can define the quality or the good data differently. But for example, when I predict which buildings should be strengthened before an earthquake, right? The data needs to provide a real world representation of these constructions. So, and to reach this condition, and as Eddie also mentioned that, you might need to apply some transformation and cleansing and all that. And because if the data is not prepared properly for this specific situation, we might end up predicting the risk of damage of these buildings wrong, which can even cost human lives. And that's, I think, very important here also that uh, yeah. good data and quality data can even mean that you can save more lives. But I have another example. Um, for example, it can also help users and customers uh, to um, ensure you know, a way for uh, make some equality when we when we come to gender and uh, race. So, for example, I heard a story about a bank's credit software, which decided uh, who can get a loan. And after a while, the management of the bank realized that mostly men receive money only. And it turned out that the solution used the data set, including more examples about men than women. So it was basically trained to give credit mostly to men <laughs> instead of women. <laughs> and a solution which uses good data can make a more inclusive data-driven decision. So. Awesome. Thanks, Eve. I think that's a great point. You know, and we see this a lot, like, and especially since we're here with all women, which I'm super excited <laughs> that it worked out this way. Um, you know, it is important to, to recognize that there's a lot of bias in data, especially when it comes to gender. So there are some ways you can be proactive to make your data good uh, so that when you do these sort of analytics or machine learning types of operations, you can make sure you have uh, inclusivity in your results and your interpretation. So I really like that. Um, Ruth, we're happy to have you here. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you're able to talk to us. Uh, do you want to kick us? Oh, we lost Ruth. <laughs> Oh man, uh, today is not Ruth's yeah. day, but you know, with these live things, <laughs> these sorts of things uh, always <laughs> tend to happen. Uh, I'm sorry, Ruth. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch you by the end of the show. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on. We talked about good data. We talked about data for good. 
Uh, I want to move on to our next question saying, you know, how do you keep your data healthy? Maybe you're using data pipelines. Are there other analytics tools you're using? Um, how do you basically foster and, and keep data healthy? Um, and for this one, we'll start with you, Eve. Thank you. Um, well, when I analyze my own solutions, I have a list of requirements that, uh, that it must meet. For example, it can be the completeness, uh, reliability, validity, uniqueness, and so on. There are a lot of different requirements that uh, we can bring on. So, um, of course, uh, depending on the problem that I want to solve. So I have queries prepared that I use on the transform data set before writing it out or using it. And um, also when I'm build and, and it can happen uh, throughout the data processing pipeline whenever there is like a critical point or even everywhere, where you, wherever you can. And when I'm, for example, working with uh, machine learning, I also apply tools like uh, interpret ML to bring explainability into uh, the confusing and complex AI systems, because these can sometimes behave very strange uh, for not fully understood reasons sometimes. And it can help me a lot to debug and fully understand my models by evaluating its accuracy and correctness. Awesome. Thanks, Eve. And yeah, I think I think, you know, you mentioned a few really great points there that like there are some things you can do kind of proactively to keep your pipelines, whether it's for data engineering or machine learning uh, to keep those healthy. Uh, you know, personally, one tool I use pretty frequently to do this is Azure Data Factory. I'm able to like very easily put things together and that way I kind of have like a consistent way of processing and cleaning my data. Uh, and, and that way I can ensure, you know, kind of the same steps are being taken each time as opposed to potentially doing some ad hoc type of work. Um, so, so that's a great answer. Thanks so much, Eve. Uh, Addy, I'd like to pass it to you. You know, what are some tips you have for how you keep your data healthy? What are some advice that you might have for folks working in organizations? Yeah, so uh, for me, um, I think I'm a, like a monitoring freak, monitoring and alerts freak, like mostly use the alerting stuff uh, on top of the monitoring itself. I like really, really like to have um, be alerted on something that I really need to know and like the monitoring to use for like whenever I would like to like do research or understand for like a previous uh, incident that I had or compare that to the history. Um, so I use the same technique for the data pipeline and the data itself to see that it's actually flowing, to see that it's like flowing the same pace that it's usually doing that, to see that it's actually like the, the second, like the, the second phase is getting the same uh, pace as the first phase and so on. Um, and I think I can like share something interesting, like for my current experience. So my current system is is after like many years in um, in working in web scale systems, SaaS service uh, that I was um, hosting uh, the uh, the data and everything on my own like uh, uh, production environment. I now work in a company in a, in a small startup that is creating a system. Um, that is trying to create a settlement and reconciliation between um, large enterprises that are doing business between themselves by creating uh, a private blockchain network. And this is a um, great interesting challenge because we don't have any access to the data. We don't have any access to like the node itself, the node themselves. They are installed in like different places in the world with different like um, network architecture and like uh, different machine and compute uh, power. And we just still have to make sure that everything is working correctly. And we actually found that it was by using the exact same uh, practice and technique as like the uh, the regular data um, data pipeline uh, and production pipeline, we can actually achieve the same. So we we did just were building um, some simple mechanism without seeing any of the information and using anything just to know that the, the data is actually flowing. So I don't know the data itself, but I know that it's actually flowing. I don't know what happened inside the system, but I know the two system has the connectivity with it between themselves and can actually transfer data. So I think like uh, it, it was um, funny to see how exactly the same uh, practice can work uh, in totally different environment. Yeah, that's definitely a really mm -hmm. exciting and like interesting example. Yeah. One I can honestly say I haven't really heard of before. Um, 
you know, personally, yeah. when I look at kind of keeping these, uh, uh, you know, like what we can do to help in these sorts of situations, I like that you mentioned monitoring and alerting. Um, I also like to set up monitoring and alerting just so you can see like if something's going wrong or especially on a security front, um, if you have any sort of issues, I know advanced threat protection is a capability that things like Azure SQL Database has, uh, which can actually alert you if you set it up, uh, if you have some sort of vulnerability or some sort of type of attack. So I think it's a good call out to say like, not only is keeping your data healthy uh, important, but it's also making sure uh, that from a security perspective, like your data is secure and private. And we did get a question from the audience that kind of relates to this. And I think both of you will have an interesting uh, perspective on it. Uh, the question is, how can we balance privacy with the need for data to help address global problems? Um, so either of you want to take a stab at that one? Two. I, I can start. I can start. So sure. I think uh, I think today, like we see the need of uh, privacy all over. Uh, like different countries has different um, uh, privacy laws and privacy regulations, but it's going there. And like uh, you definitely, when you design your system, it's the best to take this uh, consideration to start with. So when you start to actually design a system, don't keep the data that you don't really need. Um, separate like the, the really private data from the like the, the one that like everyone can access to. Um, understand how plan in advance to how you can actually d delete private data, um, and and that I think will be the best way to um, to address this uh, to balance that and address these needs. Awesome, yeah, and I think you brought out like two really important parts. Uh, one is like getting rid of data that you don't need or might contain personal information that you don't need. Uh, mm -hmm. And also like making sure people can't access data that they shouldn't be able to access. So there are lots of technologies across mm -hmm. our data platform suite that allows you to do things like dynamic data masking or encryption or role separation with things like Azure RBAC. Uh, so, so it's really important to, you know, you want to keep things, you want to have the data that you need in order to address whatever the situations that you have are, but you also want to make sure you know you're using the rules of least privilege to to get that out there. Uh, Eve, I'll, I'll pass it to you. Do you have any other tips or from your experience with data and AI uh, for balancing privacy with the need to for data to help address global type of problems? Yeah, so um, for the data part, I don't want to add much extra, but regarding to the AI part, uh, I might mention here the responsible AI principles of uh, Microsoft that might be interesting to, to review because it is these are principles that uh, ensure that AI develops in a way that can be benefited in society while in the meantime it uh, is warranting people's trust. So it, it, it's sort of like... Um, Providing a, a, like you like the developer is able to build an AI service that uh, is um, able to be uh, understood and even controlled well, and by the by by like by uh, people it can be also understood and it may be even trusted. And um, yeah, I think that is what to add for the AI part for this. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eve. It's it's great to have that perspective of both sides uh, when we talk about these sort of things. We have another question from the community. Uh, the question is, what is a data strategy and what should one consider when they're developing one? Um, so I'll, I'll kind of toss it to you, Addy, first, if that's all right. Sure. I think it's a huge question, okay? I, I, I'm not sure, like, I think it's, like, not even for just a half an hour, it's, like, can... But I can say one thing that I usually, like, when I work with startups, with early-stage startup when it just started, like, you can redesign your entire system, you can, like, refactor or move to new database or, like, uh, like split your huge monolith uh, to, like, different microservices, but you can never, never... Um, get the data that you didn't collect. So, like uh, for me, like I usually say, please try to to make sure that you collect all the data that you need. Um, it, like, and then we will see what we need to do. Uh, like, how we need to redesign the system uh, that is using that, and and on top of that. 
Yes. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. that's a great point. And, you know, I'll kind of boil it down to this. Like one of the biggest yeah. tips for, for your data strategy is that you should have one. Yeah, <laughs> right? like, this is that's, that's really the uh, first thing. It's gonna be crucial <laughs> probably to any business that you would yeah. be a part of. Uh, so making sure like Addy mentioned, you're collecting the data you're actually gonna need in the long run because you can't go back kind of retroactively and, and fill in that missing data that you might have needed all along. Uh, yeah. So I think that's that's a great point. Um, Eve, do you have any insights on creating a data strategy or what a data strategy is to you? Maybe because that is very important to collect all the data. But I, for for me personally, maybe that is the second step. Actually, I I would uh, maybe first. Um, figure out uh, for what I'm uh, collecting data for, because I obviously don't want to, and that I think you were also uh, about to say that, of course. I just want to make sure that it's clear that, that uh, it is very important to understand the requirements and make sure that the data is relevant and, and reliable for that specific problem we want to solve. And, and, uh, and then, of course, collect as much data as possible, yes and get it ready for the further processing. And there are like uh, uh, ways of doing that. And that is, again, depending on the solution that you want to do. So Awesome. Thanks, Eve. And I think, you know, you kind of like brought in something that you mentioned earlier and I forgot to highlight, so I'm glad you mentioned it, uh, is that, you know, part of having a data strategy, part about doing data for good, part of having good data is making sure at the beginning you have your requirements. Um, so I think, you know, that's one of the themes that we can kind of lay across uh, this whole kind of panel is like a, a good way to make sure you have good data and your data is doing good is to make sure you are planning, make sure you are having like a good data strategy that you know what your requirements are, that you know what you're setting out to do. So you can actually, uh, like Addy mentioned, you can make sure you're getting the right data in order to do that. Um, you can make sure you're protecting your users as you do that. You're setting up plans, who needs access to what. Uh, so there's really a lot of different flavors that come into this. But I really think at the end of the day, what we're saying is like you have to be cognizant about your data strategy and doing data for good and um, that sort of thing. Uh, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, so I want to ask one final question, and uh, it's kind of more of an open-ended question. Now, when you think about someone who's watching this today and they're trying to figure out how they can go do data for good or get good data or get healthy data, uh, what's one piece of advice uh, that you might have for them in going forward and doing that? Like, what could they do today? What could they go learn about? Any sort of advice that you might have. Um, Addy, Eve, either of you, can I put you on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> so I would just repeat something that I said like like uh, earlier in, in this panel, but I think uh, it's a huge thing now. There is like a huge um, um, company in Israel that had attacked for its data and hacked for like really private data. Just protect the data. Just make sure you protect data. For me, good data is a protected data. Um, that's like, uh, I, I can't think we can emphasize it anymore. I don't think we do enough as, uh, as industry, uh, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a great call to action, <laughs> you know, to protect your yeah. data, um, get educated on how to do that and what that means based on the platform that you're running in. Um, at Microsoft, we have something called the Azure trust center. Uh, so you might consider checking that out and seeing, you know, all the certifications that we uphold and also our tips and tricks and best practices for how you can uh, protect your data, regardless of what data platform or even more generally Azure service uh, that you're using. Uh, so thanks for that. I think that's a, a great piece of insight. Um, Eve, I'll, I'll, I'll toss it to you. You know, what's your like one piece of advice or insight that you would uh, give to our viewers? I'm also going to sort of repeat myself and uh, also uh, have to say a big thank you for the question about the data strategy because that's very important to, yes, remember to keep your data healthy and keep it safe, keep it uh, uh, protected. But the other thing is uh, quality data is, is also very well prepared and, and uh, the right quality that uh, leads to a reliable um, solution in the end. That is, I think, really important to keep monitoring, like how we said before. Awesome, thanks, Eve. Uh, I think it's a great call out again. You know, just remembering, you know, that you want to monitor these things. You want to make sure you have a data strategy. 
you know, if we're starting to sound like a broken record, I think it's a good thing because I think it means we're all on the same page, we're all in agreement on what you should go do in order to get good data and ultimately use data for good. Uh, so Addy, Eve, I want to thank you so much for being on our panel today. I think it's been really valuable for myself. Uh, I've learned a few things from, from you all, some new interesting scenarios I didn't think about before, especially in fintech. Uh, I also want to thank our viewers for tuning in. Uh, we've got some excellent sessions coming up as well. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to see Ruth today, but I definitely recommend you go follow her and check her out on the Dev2 page because I think uh, you'll definitely want to learn from her perspective as well. So again, thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to bring the other Addy back up and we're going to, <laughs> to the next section. <laughs> thank you very much. And you're on mute. <laughs> yes, of course. You need to do it one more last time before 2020 ends. Uh, thank you, everyone. It was super insightful. Definitely looking forward to learn from you about data strategy, data quality, data for good, monitoring everything that we do. Because you know, without monitoring and without data, basically, we don't have eyes into what's going on into our production into our products into our everything that we're doing uh, mm -hmm. so thank you thank you for mentioning it and also yes privacy privacy is super important you know in healthcare or in a lot of industries like insurance and fintech privacy is key so protect your data make it good make it work for you uh, to build great products uh, so thank you adi eve and anna it was lovely to have you with us today Thank you very much. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye. All right. Let me bring up my screen. Yes. So this was Adi Shacham Shavit, Eve Party, Anna Hoffman, and we missed Ruth Yako because we did have technical issues. But like uh, Anna said before, you can go into the Dev2 page that we set up for you and go and ask questions, and Ruth will be there to help you uh, and educate you and to share her data strategies as well.